On November 14th, the family of jailed British Egyptian activist Ala Abdul Fattah confirmed that he had started drinking water once again. On the 6th of November, as the world's eyes were trained on the city of Sharm el Sheikh for COP27, Egyptian British activist Ala Abdul Fattah drank his last sip of water. Held at the Wadi al Natrun prison north of Cairo, the step marks a grave escalation of Fatah's months long struggle for freedom. An icon of Egypt's 2011 revolution, the 40 year old was sentenced to five years in prison in December 2021 on charges of spreading false news that undermines national security. The trial, which was marked by major due process violations, was not the first time that the activist was hounded and jailed by the Egyptian state. Fatah has spent eight of the last 10 years in prison. He was first jailed in 2013 after the military coup led by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, then again in 2015. Mere months after being granted conditional release in 2019, Fatah was imprisoned again. Before being sentenced in 2021, Fatah spent over two years in pre-trial detention under brutal conditions, which at one point even drove him to contemplate suicide. In April 2022, Fatah launched a partial hunger strike to demand freedom. By May, he was shifted from the Torah prison to a rehabilitation centre in the Wadi al Natrun complex. Fatah is among over 60,000 people believed to be held as political prisoners under President al-Sisi. On the 1st of November, Fatah announced that he would only drink water ahead of launching a full hunger strike on the 6th. His family has warned that he may only live a few more days given that his health has declined significantly because of a seven-month-long hunger strike. Despite a serious threat to his safety and freedom, Fatah's sister and activist, Sana Saif, arrived in Sharm el-Sheikh on the 7th of November to draw attention to this case. Right now, all we know is that Ali stopped drinking water 50 hours ago. We don't know where he is. We don't know if he's alive. Um, my mother waited outside the prison gates for 10 hours yesterday for her weekly letter. They didn't give her one. She's back at those gates right now. I asked the British authorities to get us some proof that Ale is alive and conscious. I did not get any response. Right here in this conference center, the Egyptian foreign minister, who is also the COP president, has been giving interviews saying there is nothing to worry about and that the prison have medical facilities. President Sisi made a commitment to President Macron that Talia's health will be preserved. And these statements really worried me. Saif previously held a sit-in outside the UK Foreign Office in October to force the United Kingdom government to take concrete action towards his release. Fatah's family has reportedly condemned the UK government for failing to act, especially given that he is a UK citizen. Finally, on the 5th of November, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak wrote to the family saying that the government was committed to resolving his case and that Fatah was a priority. Sunak added that UK officials were pushing for consular access to Fatah and calling for his release at the highest levels of the Egyptian government. When asked about Fatah at COP27 by Vice World News on the 7th of November, Sunak was rushed away from the scene. Now, all I know is that he stopped water uh, yesterday morning and um, my mom is outside the prison trying to get any information or a letter but no, so far nothing, and I, 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 I've asked the British government to get us daily proof of life because we will not be able to get proof of life. In the absence of meaningful official action, Fatah's cause has been taken up in a major way by the delegations attending COP27, as well as progressive leaders, activists and writers. When the floor was open to question, Saif was heckled by Egyptian Member of Parliament, Amar Darwish, who was then escorted out of the venue. I'm not from the Egyptian authority. No, don't touch me. I am the Egyptian parliament. No, 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 don't. You are here in the Egyptian land. You are here in the Egyptian land. Don't touch me. You are here in the Egyptian land. Okay? I will sit. I, I ask her a question. She should answer me. Okay. As Fatah's family campaigns tirelessly for his release, they've been joined by the United nation's human rights chief, Volker Turk, who warned on November 8th that his life was in great danger. Turk called on the Egyptian authorities to fulfill their human rights obligations and immediately release all those arbitrarily detained, including those in pre-trial detention, as well as those unfairly convicted. UK Foreign Office Minister Andrew Mitchell 
confirmed in cabinet that Fatah's case had also been raised by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. However, consular access has still not been secured. Meanwhile, speaking in UK Parliament, Shadow Foreign Secretary David Lammy called for serious diplomatic consequences if Allah is not freed and reunited with his family and consular access continues to be denied. I've just read a bit more of this letter. This kid's been, not a kid, this man has been in prison for nine years. Nine years in an Egyptian prison. Rishi Sunak. In case you don't know, mate, you're the new Prime Minister of England. This is one of your subjects and he's rotting in some filthy jail cell in Egypt, dying of self-imposed hunger. Nine years they've had him locked up for nothing. Please, Rishi, do something about it today. Do it today. Save this man's life today, please.